welcome to Looking Up. This is a podcast for Christian women. We hope you're having a great day so far and that listening to this podcast will make your day even better because it's our goal to remind you to look up and encourage you and just have a good conversation um, here with my dear friend, Carla Moore, and I'm Kathy Pollard. We're your host for this podcast. Today, we're going to talk about something sort of more lighthearted and fun. Um, <clears throat> Twelve seconds. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> this idea of, um, are you likable? Do you think you're likable? How to be likable? So before we get into that conversation, wherever it leads us, Carla, how have you been and what have you been up to? Been fine. This topic of likable makes me think of Sally Field and this dates me, I'm sure. But remember, she won an Oscar and she said, you like me. You really like me. You really like me. <laughs> So when you brought this up, I couldn't help thinking, you really like me, but no, I'm doing fine. Uh, Everything's good. busy. Yeah, yeah. Still working on that balance thing, but, um, but it's all good. I'm, I'm taking sure a couple that's... classes at Bear Valley, at Bear just Valley. auditing, just auditing mm -hmm. them. I'm taking John's church history class and Michael Hyde's Luke class. And I'm really enjoying that. So that's kind of kept me busy. I've got a ladies day this weekend that I'm doing with Aaron in Texas. So That'd be so Lots of stuff going on this weekend mm -hmm. and, and just right now. So but it's all good. What's, What's going your topic? on there? What's your topic this weekend? Uh, it's the topic is called nurturing the precious souls around us. Oh, so yeah, it's going to be so is that I, I like, the study. Um, family or <clears throat> what's the, well, I think what's, that what's Aaron the point? Is, <laughs> <laughs> I think Aaron is going to talk more about you know, our, our family, our church family, the people mm -hmm. around us, you know, more of kind of the practical stuff. And I was going to try to focus on, on, um, who are the precious or who are the souls and how do we nurture them when we see them as God sees them and treat them as God mm -hmm. treats them. That's kind of where I'm, I'm trying to go with it. So okay. I don't, I'm never okay. finished with a lesson until I like stand up to give it. Are you, you normally are much more ready. Than well, I, am, but... I'm, I usually write it out, but then I keep going back there and I'm scratching things out mm -hmm. and changing things around. And Neil's yeah. the one that he writes it and memorizes it and that's it. <laughs> yeah. I can't memorize anything. I usually like no, use my computer either. to, to make an outline and do the study. Mm -hmm. And I plug things in on my, I type it, but then I write it on my notability on my iPad because mm -hmm. I feel like I when when I write it, I retain it better. Yeah. So that's then smart. I go back over it, but I'm just always I never feel like I could completely finish a lesson and mm -hmm. just work on it until I get up and then pray that it makes sense when I, it's just <laughs> speaking is, as I'm evidenced right here is not my gift, but I, Oh, not true. No, it is not true. Not true. No. All right. Not true. Next topic. Well, by the time this airs, you'll be done with that. So maybe mm -hmm. you can share the link. I'm sure mm -hmm. they're going to record it. Right. I don't know. I don't know. We'll see. Yeah. Well, if you find out, it sounds like a great topic. Maybe you can share it in the looking up group and yeah, we can good listen. Study. Good. Yeah. Very cool. Have you been yeah. thrifting? I, I have nothing real exciting. Um, I found a purse and just some little things. I'm starting to look for some, uh, I, you know, the whole back and forth to dripping springs in Denver. I left most of the clothes that I think I'm going to need for this trip that's coming up in March. And mm. I brought the shoes that I know I'll need, but I don't know exactly what the temperature is going to be. So anyway, I've been looking for some more like travel pants and things like that, but I, mm -hmm. I haven't found anything exciting. My niece did though. She texted me and said, you're, you're not going to believe what I found in uh, San Marcos, which is a college town. And mm -hmm. usually that Goodwill is just kind of junky oh, okay. because, you know, a college town often just is kind of the cast off stuff from students when they don't want to take it back home with them when they leave mm -hmm. for the summer or whatever. That makes sense. But she found like six or seven Johnny was tops. And that, that brand is called Johnny was, what is that name anyway? Johnny was <laughs> what Johnny was happy designer. I don't know, but um, it's, it's an expensive brand. Like t-shirts can be $150 and oh, wow. more it's, it's all the embroidery mm -hmm. kind of fun colors and stuff. Anyway, she found six or seven of them in a row. So she hit the jackpot and she sent me a picture and she's just better at that. She spends a lot more time on it than I do. So it's I was fun. not wearing $150 t-shirts when I was in college. Actually, well, I'm not wearing $150 t-shirts now. Yeah. <laughs> Come to think <laughs> Let's of it. Let's make that clarification. 
Yeah. Well, I mean, it probably wasn't a college student, but who yeah. knows? It may have been. Yeah. You never know Ooh. these days. Yeah. But I to just my get roommate. rid of seven of them. I mean, yeah, yeah I know. Crazy. It's crazy. My yeah. roommate, when I was in college, wore Clinique makeup and I was mm-hmm. a drugstore makeup girl. Yeah. <laughs> I remember being so jealous. <laughs> yeah. She got to go to the Clinique counter. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> and um, a friend of ours was, her mom was doing Mary Kay. Mm-hmm when I was in college and we went home with her for the weekend and her mom gave us all Mary Kay facials and I splurged. I mean, I had no money in college. I was working three jobs and putting all the money toward my tuition Mm -hmm. and I had no money, but I spent what I didn't have. (laughs) All this Mary Kay stuff and felt so fancy. (laughs) Yeah. Well, that's been around a long time. Uh, It really has. Yeah. Well, what's going on on the homestead? Um, well, we just celebrated mm-hmm. Dale and Janelle's birthday. We combined their birthday celebration mm-hmm. Monday night and had a shrimp boil. It was my mm-hmm. first time doing one of those. I think it turned out pretty good. So that was fun. And <clears throat> I was going to show you these little cute earrings. Can you see those? I uh, love those. I, I want her to put that online so we can order. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, she is selling them. I just don't know if they're online, but she makes them out of leather and she mm-hmm. brought over a whole pile of them. Monday night. So all of us girls, she was like, just pick out the one you want. And so I chose this one. It looks really cute with my coffee, yeah. coffee, coffee sweatshirt I'm wearing today, mm-hmm. but, um, she's so talented, but I was going to show you, she has these really, you know, professional looking, um, I don't know if that's showing up, yeah, professional looking cards that the name of her brand is shaggy sheep company. Mm-hmm. And I can't remember if I mentioned here already, but the name comes from, she would re- reference shabby chic you know, Mm -hmm. a while back and Dale always thought she was saying shaggy sheep. (laughs) So that's why that's the name of her, her brand. Mm -hmm. But anyway, I just want to share that because they're so cute. Those are adorable. Really, Mm -hmm. really good. And they're real, they're leather, but they're real lightweight. You know, that's the thing about leather. They're lightweight and you can wear them all day and it doesn't bother your ears. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I also wanted to share before I forget, um, because I asked for everybody to pray for my sister, Mm -hmm. Christy and she received the best news. Her doctor said it could not have gone better mm-hmm. and um, that she's 99% cancer free. So I want to thank everybody for thinking of her and praying for her and pass along that really good yeah. news, that report that she got. So that truly is God awesome. Mm-hmm. Awesome in the the best sense. Yes. Thankful. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Well, is she having any like leftover symptoms of that week by herself, that radioactivity stuff. <laughs> yes. <laughs> She's not glowing green. Well, is she? Yeah. I think it'll probably take her a while to feel back to normal anyway, just because of having to go off of, you know, her thyroid mm-hmm. medicine for so long and everything. But, um, day by day, I said, whenever she feels up to it, we're all going to get together and celebrate and have a big party. Yeah. So we look forward yeah. to that. Good. Yeah. Well, so have you had any more issues with <clears throat> hay out in the barn and what's going on in that <laughs> arena. Well, Neil's picking up some more today because we were getting pretty low and um, he is bringing, well, he was bringing, I don't know if he's back yet or not, but he was bringing back 47 hay bales. And we only have a small trailer, a pull behind trailer for the truck. So yeah. he said, you can imagine how that looked. He filled the whole trailer and the back of his pickup truck. <laughs> with all picturing of him hay. dragging yeah, underneath so, an overpass somewhere. Exactly. So, but we're grateful to find some because it's getting a little bit scarce around here really and we don't really have a place to store a lot of hay so that's been our challenge but um anyway and we have a sorry (laughs) we have like a like a metal garage thing that (laughs) you laughing at me because you do this when you're uncomfortable you're like you pull it you do well, that's because I get embarrassed and then my underarms start itching at the same time. So. <laughs> well, I guess this is better than this. <laughs> that's right. Just don't start doing that. Oh, me. Um, we have a, like a covered garage area. We have a metal mm-hmm. shed that yeah. has like a little covered area where we keep mm-hmm. the lawnmower and Pepe. And, and yeah. so th- the back half of that is where we're stacking up all of our hay and then covering with a tarp. So, yeah. And for those lighting. of you who are new to the podcast, Pepe is not a little French man that they have staying in their garage. <laughs> it is their Pepe is our little ATV. all-terrain yeah, vehicle. But um, so <clears> it's, you know, <throat> it's, it's pretty close to the barn and it's not ideal, but it keeps it dry. And mm-hmm. until we, Eventually, we're going to be adding on an extra space in the barn just to store 
the hay, but we don't have that yet. So yeah, that's all. Oh, and then in a couple of weeks, we're going to be breeding peaches so that she can be ready for the next round of calving and more milk. And so that'll be fun and new and adventuresome for us. So that's why you do it. I, it, you know, I'm not a super country girl, so, but you have to breed her to, so she'll have a calf so that the milk will stay coming. So mm-hmm. you can't just keep milking her and it, she won't just keep providing milk. You have to have right. another calf. Yeah. So she we only won't be getting milk from her two months leading up to her calving. So the first seven months of her pregnancy, we can still milk her mm-hmm. and then we'll give her those last two months to dry up and kind of prepare for the birth, put on more weight, all that kind of stuff. So mm-hmm. from what I understand, <laughs> this is new for you too. I could just be making this up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure you know all what you're talking about. You know more right, than me. You could fool right, me. Right. <laughs> well, that'll be fun to have a little calf. Yes. So, but you're, yes. Yeah. So, and you're going to, you get to choose, you're going to do AI. So you'll choose the, mm-hmm. the, the sire, I guess. Is that what a, the bull would be a sire? Is that what they call it? I have no idea. There. Okay. Um, right. Maybe yeah, we should the, avoid this conversation. The, <laughs> <laughs> who we bought her from already is going to provide what we need because he wants to keep her line pure so that if she has a girl, he wants to buy her from us. So, um, so, so that's already... Yeah, that's already all good to go. And then we already have friends who know how to do the deed. So, <laughs> okay, moving right along. Moving right we'll along. get ourselves into trouble if we, <laughs> if we linger too long here. <laughs> AI does not mean artificial intelligence all the time. So, no, no. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, <laughs> moving right along. That's right. Next time. I'm doing some more sourdough kind of things in the kitchen. Yeah. Made some you made English, English muffins. muffins and I've been using more of the discard. I haven't really done a lot with sourdough discard, but <clears throat> I made a Dutch baby with a discard. It's like a German pancake, you know, the kind where it's got a lot of eggs in it and it puffs up. Oh, like a popover? And kind of, except it's bigger. Okay. But I made one of those and yesterday I made pizza with the sourdough discard. So I've never... I hadn't tried that before. I've made sourdough pizza, but not with the discard. So I'm trying a lot of new things. I always feel like there's this whole new world of sourdough. I know it's not new because it's been going on for years, but there's this world mm-hmm. of sourdough that I'm not a part of. And I want to be. I feel kind of a bit <laughs> left out, honestly. But someday I'll be a cool well, girl and I'll do uh, sourdough. I, I, it's, you know what? I have mixed feelings about it. I feel like I'm doing it because I should be. You know, if you have a little farm net, you should be doing sourdough and it's supposed to be, it really is supposed to be very good for you as far as how your body digests it. It's supposed to not give you that sugar, that insulin spike, you know, all the, cause you know, all those great things about it, but Mm -hmm. it's, I just don't know. I like to be able to make bread when I want to make bread, when I'm in the mood for it. I don't want to have to think about it ahead of time. Yeah. And anything sourdough, no matter what they say. You have to think about it ahead of time, mm-hmm. at least a day or two. Yeah. And that was my going. problem. I mean, years ago I did, we called it friendship starter, but I felt like I was letting my friendship starter down if I forgot about it and I just <laughs> couldn't keep up with it. And I, I know I mentioned before, it just, we gained weight. So I have, yeah, I love baking and especially baking cookies and bread and stuff like yeast bread. I prefer, of course, that's mm-hmm. not as good for you. Mm-hmm. There's probably not anything good for you about it, but it tastes good. It does. But, and you can, you can still make yeast bread with whole grains and you can still make it healthy. Mm-hmm. But the, the friendship starter, I think is like the one that Alicia Pennington gave me that I mentioned last week. Yeah. And what I like about hers is that she keeps it in the freezer. Mm-hmm. So that's pretty nice. So there's less maintenance, right? That mm-hmm. way. Yeah. There's a, I mean, it sounds you, like quite a bit of, on the front end. Yeah. You still have to think about it you know, and do things, hang out with it for a few days before you yeah, make something I would with fail. it. But... I'm sitting here looking at, there's five bananas sitting next to the sink that are black <laughs> because Salisha Grider, you are in my head every time I have black bananas because she makes banana bread. She will not let me, like, I can't throw them out. I do because sometimes you just have to, but I, I have all these good intentions. 
Mm -hmm. And I just don't have time or I find something different to do. So yeah, things have just changed Mm -hmm. that I miss. I miss that part. (laughs) Lots of parts, lots of parts. (laughs) That's a, that's a whole nother topic. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, it is. We, we've already talked about that today too. Yeah. I'm trying to think if there's anything else I wanted to share with you. I kind of was going to bring up some stuff and I thought I'm saving that for next week. (laughs) Why? Why are you saving it for next week? Well, because something will happen between now and next week that'll make it more interesting for me to talk about it. Oh, that sounds mysterious. (laughs) It's not, but. (laughs) Well, you have Freed Hardeman lectures coming up. When is that? Two weeks from today. Okay. Well, the lectureship starts before then, but Mm -hmm. I actually speak two weeks from today. I think I'm the the last day of the lectureship Thursday. Mm -hmm. What is your topic? (laughs) It's kind of a long title. It's something like, (laughs) I thought you'd forgotten. (laughs) No, it's something like, because he is giving us a banquet, we have a reason to celebrate or Mm -hmm. something. It's revelation 19 and the passage about the bride and the groom and the bride and her being arrayed in fine linen and, um, the marriage supper of the lamb. You know, okay. that's my text. So. Mm-hmm. Good. Mm-hmm. Well, I, hope, I know you enjoy that study. I'm sure. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, ready? I'm ready. Well, it's your turn. So I'm, <laughs> I'm waiting I'm for driving. you. You're I'm driving. driving. Uh, so anyway, we're talking about how to be more likable. And the reason this came up sometimes ideas for these episodes come about in the most convoluted way. And today is just one of those examples because I ran across a book in, you know, one of my Kindle fees or Amazon. I don't even know what it was, but I ran across this book that intrigued me and it was called, I had to write it down, Life in Five Senses. Hmm. And the whole premise behind the book, it's really intriguing, is that most of us tend to neglect at least one of our senses. Okay. And so, um, and everybody leans more heavily on, you know, one or more of our five senses. And so the whole idea is she walks you through figuring out which sense you tend to neglect and how to embrace it more so that you have a more fuller expression of life, you know, mm-hmm. more enjoyment of living, more awareness, more blah, blah, blah. And anyway, I haven't read the book. I haven't bought the book. I'm not, (laughs) I don't know. You got the title girl. All I got was the title and what it was about, which I thought was intriguing. And so because of that, I ended up looking at the author. Her name is Gretchen Rubin and found out that she is some sort of philosopher who um, her expertise is happiness, like people's behavior and how it's tied to happiness. And so her podcast is called the happier podcast. Mm. And so Then, as I'm going down this trail, I thought, well, what does she have to say? And I found one episode um, where a portion of that episode was covering a surprising way to be more likable. And so I listened to it and it was very interesting. I'm going to share what she had to say. But that's what led to this whole, that would be a fun conversation. So let me just go ahead and say, I am not recommending Gretchen Rubin. I don't know anything about her. (laughs) Sorry. I don't know anything about her podcast. I've only listened to this one segment of one podcast and I don't know anything about this book, but that's how we got here. But on this podcast, she's the surprising way to be more likable is um, don't be so accommodating. That was her tip. I know. And that weird. That is weird. And the example that she gave is that when, when you're with friends, you're going out to dinner, Hey, you guys want to go out to eat? And then you say, where do you want to go? Oh, I don't care wherever you want to go. And she said, really people don't like that. Mm -hmm. And they don't like it when you say that, and they want you to give input. They want you to give them a suggestion in your opinion. And she was explaining how (laughs) you think you're just being accommodating and easy going and whatever you pick, I'm happy with. But they think you're putting all the work on us. Now we have to come up with something and you're not even offering any suggestion, you know. So that was the premise behind all of that, which was interesting by itself. Yeah, I don't know if I completely agree with that. I can see I how it's it's helpful when somebody says, okay, here's three three places. Where would you like to go? Rather than, I don't care, wherever. But 
Well, and you're get, smart because saying. that's exactly the suggestion <laughs> that she made. You know, yeah. she's like, at least give them something and say, well, I really like Mexican or Italian or, you know, at least give them narrow the field. That's So that's exactly what she said. But I do acknowledge that, you know, sometimes Neil and I go out to eat on Sundays after church and mm-hmm. we go back and forth every single time. You know, mm-hmm. where do you want to go? I don't care. You pick. No, I pick last time. You pick. No, it's your turn. You pick. Really, I don't care. Where do you want to go? We go through this whole thing and it's exhausting. <laughs> I just always tell John, I just reserve the right to veto. That's all I want to yeah. do. I just want to be able to say, no, no, somewhere else. Yeah. Well, usually it goes something like Neil saying, well, you know where I want to go. And I'm going, oh, <laughs> where does he want to go? Barbecue. Yeah. Mission barbecue or, or, you know, something like that, but, or a steakhouse. It's either barbecue or a steakhouse. Mm-hmm. Pretty John much. I'm pick time. Rudy's every day of the week what's that rudy's barbecue it's a gas oh. station with barbecue oh <laughs> yeah yeah i mean it's not bad but mm-hmm. like if i confess that sometimes when we're going down the road if i see a rudy's sign i'm like look over there to distract <laughs> the other him way. from yeah <laughs> i like it but it's just you know every time yeah. hmm. right right okay, sorry i'm just well, we- distracting since we're already distracted, we do <clears throat> shout out to our friends, Jeremy and Ashley Waddell, because they have opened up their own food chat called yeah. Bub's Barbecue, and he has got it down pat. I mean, he can smoke a good brisket. Isn't it your brother that does a really good brisket? Yeah. I yeah. think he would give your brother a run for his money, really? actually. You yes. have to have a cook is, off. Right? It is very good. But anyways, so that's how we landed here, and I thought, we should talk about that. Mm-hmm. And you know, are you, do you think of yourself as a likable person? Do you come across that way? And so I figured we might want to start out with some disclaimers. <laughs> First of all, <laughs> Go ahead. We're, we're not having this topic because we think we're likable and we've got it all figured out. How many times have we said that? I was going to say, as with most topics, we are just interested in this topic and thought it would be fun. To talk about. So, you know, like I said, we're not exactly sure where this is going to land. We just thought it would be fun to talk about. I thought it would be fun to talk about. Also, another thing to point out, um, there is, you know, passages in the Bible about the fact that living the Christian life means that the world may hate you as because they don't understand or they don't like what the rightness that you're standing up for, as we read in John 15, 18 through 20. Sorry. I did want to point that out also. We're not talking about, Mm. you know, assuming that everybody needs to like you all the time or anything like that. This is a way more casual conversation. Yeah. Um, And then finally, some people aren't going to like us just because they don't. (laughs) No matter what you do. (laughs) Something's wrong with them, but whatever. You know, that's just (laughs) how it is. You're just, I am just not going to be everybody's cup of tea. And that's okay. That's, that's life. So we're, we're not really talking about any of that kind of stuff. We're just talking about being likable in general. So I thought I would ask a couple of questions um, to get the conversation going. And one of them is a personal question for you, Carla. And so think back into your growing up years, back into your long time ago history. 20 years ago? Maybe. Maybe like middle school, high school, Ugh. somewhere around there. Do you remember <laughs> feeling, Do you, did you ever go through a phase where you just really wanted to be liked and, you know, not, maybe not to the point of desperately <laughs> wanting to be liked, but did you ever have this sort of awkward period or this phase where you felt like you had to try harder to be liked, or maybe you even started doing something or gave into something or adopted a trend that you didn't even like? Just to be liked. Hmm. Do you remember anything like that? Oh, yeah. Growing up? First of all, I'm worried that people are not going to like me because I swallowed wrong. And now I have <laughs> to keep clearing my throat. Sorry. Oh, <clears throat> try to get that out of the way. I remember like sixth and seventh grade in particular. That's such an awkward age. At least it, it was is. for me. Mm-hmm. Something about being 12, 13 years old. And it felt like it, it seemed like a lot of it centered around always being part of a trio. And, you know, anytime that happens, exactly. yeah. And and still, even as an adult that happens, but when there's three girls, it seems like two are going to be closer than the one that's not, you know, they're, they're Mm -hmm. all friends, but 
these two are going to pick each other and then this one's going to feel left out of, at some point. And I know that I had a lot of that. I remember mm -hmm. even the girls' names and, and I don't hold anything against them. We were all just mm -hmm. immature then, but yeah, there's so much of that. It, when I think about it, it even gives me that icky feeling in my mm -hmm. stomach of remembering, trying to figure out where to fit in, especially when you know that you're, you know, maybe before you're a, a Christian, but you, you've been brought up that way. And so you, there's something different about you anyway, and we're supposed to be, mm -hmm. but yet at the, at that age, it's still important to be liked by people. And, and so trying to figure out the balance there is a, mm -hmm. is a tough thing to, to look like them, but not look like them to feel pressure to, to dress like them or say things like them. I'm not even talking about things that are wrong. I'm just saying mm -hmm. right. style or whatever. Mm -hmm. And, oh, that's just a kind of a hard place to be. Well, you, you hit the nail on the head because something I find myself saying a lot when I see drama amongst adults, you know, I always mm -hmm. say, what, what is this sixth grade? Yeah. Because mm -hmm. that just in my mind is stuck as that time period when I remember that whole, I don't know if you'd use the word rivalry or what, but that whole, you know, are you going to sit by me today in lunch? Mm -hmm. Are you, you know, and, and like you said, usually it involves two or three friends and all the drama that goes along with that. And that's remember, that's when I first remember things getting awkward in relationships. So yeah. sixth grade and beyond. Um, so <clears throat> as we start out, I was thinking, number one, there are, some people that just aren't likable, <laughs> right? <laughs> and mm -hmm. I mean, we all know people mm -hmm. that just aren't likable for whatever reason, you know, maybe they're prickly or they're difficult, gruff yeah. or, you know, and you kind of have to, there are those people that you kind of have to say, but, but once you get to know them, you know, they're, yeah. they're a good soul. They have a, a tender heart underneath all of that cactus mm -hmm. exterior, you know, you kind of make those little apologies for them. Right. And, or those people that are like that, but you love them anyway, because you're supposed to, and you just make that decision to love them anyway. Well, do they know that they're not likable? Mm. Do you think they know that they're not, and they don't care? Or do they just not see it themselves? I think it's a mixture of both, maybe depending on who it is. Um, you know, when you brought this topic up, immediately what comes to mind are, you know, instead of thinking about what's likable, you tend to think about, well, what about those people that you have difficulty liking and what is it, the characteristics that they have? Mm -hmm. But I'm thinking of one in particular that kind of like you said, at, at first, it, this person was very prickly and very difficult, just difficult, but investing the time in getting to know this person I find out what a gem they are, mm -hmm. but then, so I think it, it probably has something to do with their family circumstance or something in their, in their past that made them that way. Or, mm -hmm. you know, we've talked about the difference between personality and character and some people's personality is just, I don't know, because character to me means that you're working on those things that will make you more likable or pleasant, you know, there's lots of different synonyms. I think we could use pleasant would be one of them, or, mm -hmm. um, I don't know. Uh, but this, some people just on, on the surface have protection and barriers and there's something about them that makes you have to look twice or dig a little deeper or make more mm -hmm. of an effort. And, and, but, you know, I don't think I'm trying to think if there's ever been a person who I started off just really having a difficult time with that I, if I did, didn't invest in them if I did invest in them, I ended up really liking them. Mm -hmm. And I, I can't think of anybody that that's true of. So mm -hmm. invest in them, I guess, is, is mm -hmm. a, is a tip. Mm -hmm. Um, well, I was thinking about, you know, I don't know if you've ever been told by anybody. Okay. Now in adulthood, I'm talking, I'm not talking about sixth grade, mm -hmm. that, or you found out that somebody didn't like you mm -hmm. in adulthood, even the phrasing sounds very elementary, but you know, <laughs> Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, but I was thinking about, you know, several years ago, I've shared this with you before that, um, somebody came and admitted to me that they didn't like me because I was too huggy and I came across as shallow. And that's what made me think about, 
when you give off certain a certain impression or certain vibes, certain vibes, and you're not even aware of it, you know, mm-hmm. and that it's coming across in an off-putting way, or you think you're doing one thing, but it's being received or coming across completely different. And so, you know, that was it really caught me off guard because I thought, what? Yeah. <laughs> you know I mean? Something's wrong with you. What? I grew up hugging people. I've always been a hugger, you know, and we've talked about this before, but, you know, I've scaled my hugging way back since then because I don't know what it was, but that was the impression that I was giving. And so the other night, um, all the kids were here for, we celebrated Dale and Jenna's birthday and we were talking about um, texting. And how sometimes when you're reading somebody's text, we kind of insert things that aren't there. You know, mm-hmm. we we read it in a certain tone because there's no emoji attached to it. Yeah. <laughs> there's no exclamation yeah. point. It's just a short, brief answer with a period. And you're going, are they mad at me? Are they yeah. not really wanting to do this? Are they, you know, we're kind of You get the thumbs up and that's it. Yeah. And so it generated this conversation about how there are certain people that you get a text from and they always sound mad. Yeah. But they're not that way in real life. Mm-hmm. And you have to remind yourself. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm I have sure, one in I'm mind sure in particular. They're not mad at me. <laughs> mm-hmm. You're scrolling back. What did I say? You know? Yeah. Well, so in the midst of this conversation, one of my sons whom, whose name I shall not mention said that my text, come across as mad. And I went, what? No, they don't. You're very (laughs) proper with your texting. Like you have commas and X and the, what do you call those? Not italics, but quote marks, quote marks, quotation marks. Yeah. And so your, your texts are more formal, but not, no, I don't ever think you're mad. (laughs) Well, so it put me on the defensive and I was like, no, they're not. I am very careful about that. And so well, that was Monday night. And ever since then, every time I text somebody, I'm looking back for what can I add to this to make it look more, more a bunch of happy faces. Right <laughs> because again, sometimes you think you're making these assumptions that what you're giving off is going to be received one way. And it's just not, you know, mm. and I'm looking at him going, what? <laughs> so, you know, are we... We think we're likable, but are we, do we even know when we're not, could we be given off vibes that are being perceived in a different way? That was just something I thought might be worth thinking about. So then well, I go ahead. Well, I, I, you may be, are you continuing that or are you leaving that? Cause I was going to make a comment about that. Make a comment about that. Please. Well, I remember when we were first married, my mom told me that someone had told her that I didn't look happy. And, Mm -hmm. and she told, you know, she was, she, mothers tell you things that nobody else will. And she was basically saying, you know, we talk about our resting face. Now, Mm -hmm. somebody will say, I just have a resting face that does, that makes that face. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of how I felt back then. That's, it wasn't that I was unhappy. I mean, I was a newlywed. So there was a lot of different um, transition going on in my life, but I wasn't unhappy at all, but it made me really think about what, what a vibe am I putting off? So I tried to be more conscious of, of what I looked like and tried to smile more, even though I remember saying it feels fake to just go around pasting a smile on. So there's more to it. I think you have to really concentrate on what you're thinking and, and, you know, we want to be approachable. And if you're wearing a resting face that looks mean, I think we can, I think we just can't say that's just, that's another one of those things. That's just who I am. Mm -hmm. I think we need to do what we can to have a pleasant exterior, but we, I don't guess we all know that we're doing that because I, I didn't know that until my mom told me, but I did not tell you one time about seeing a picture of myself looking at someone. I was thinking I brought this up before I saw a picture of myself Mm -hmm. looking at someone, this was in high school that I didn't like. Oh, no. Someone just happened to snap a picture of me and I saw what my face looked like when I was looking at her. Boy, you talk about a mirror on my soul. Oh, wow. Because, and I think it's still somewhere in my mom's photographs, but um, mm-hmm. oh, it was, 
it was very telling. It was like, I could see the, the disdain on my face and Mm -hmm. anyone that knew me knew that that was what I was feeling. So I think we have to be careful about our facial expressions and that helps with likability, doesn't it? It does. And that's something that I have to be aware of all the time. And I always know when I'm not like when I let it slip, (laughs) you know, if I just get comfortable when I'm just sitting there listening to the conversations, you know, Mm -hmm. usually if somebody says to me, are you okay? (laughs) Yeah. I'm like, Oh, oops. (laughs) I hate that question. My normal face slipped out. Sorry. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Or I'm thinking about something else or whatever. Exactly. Exactly. Well, um, I kind of thought, you know, if there is somebody that gives off that unlikable vibe, what usually does that look like? You know, when you meet somebody that you're just not drawn to immediately, what is it about that person that made them seem, you know, we've already talked about the fact that oftentimes when you take the time to get to know somebody, there's more to it, but what is it about them that made them seem unlikable? Well, there's usually a frown of some sort and yeah. not necessarily just a real obvious one, but you know, I think you see it more in the forehead and the eyes and um, there's just something about them that you feel this kind of force field around them. That's don't touch me. Don't look at me. Don't talk to me. And uh, so, I mean, I, that's what I think of, I guess, is something that looks like a frown. I don't know. What are you thinking? Yeah, I was thinking about um, a personality that seems gruff. Mm-hmm. You know, like they always have that little bit of a scowl or when they're, you're talking to them, they kind of look at you like, what are you talking about? Yeah. Do you even know what you're talking about? <laughs> yeah. Someone that makes you feel <laughs> insignificant or. Yes. Stupid. <laughs> yeah. Stupid. Mm-hmm. Can we say that word? <laughs> I sure hope so. It's a real word. I know. Uh, yeah. So I was thinking about um, the opposite of that. You were mentioning you know, watching your face, minding your countenance. And, but on the other hand, that can go too far, you know, um, being fake. Yes. And I'm thinking of this encounter in particular, where every single time I would talk to somebody and say, how are you doing? Fantastic. Hmm. You know, every single time, you know, and then they would come back with, how are you? Well, I feel like I can't just go fine. (laughs) You have to be better. (laughs) answer in kind or, you know, and it just, after a while, you just kind of go, I don't even want to ask you how you're doing because I don't feel like dealing with that whole fantastic thing. Mm -hmm. So, so part of it is, and the part of the, you know, the receiver too, what's going on in my mind when I'm around you, that obviously Mm -hmm. is going to play a lot of part in that too. Mm -hmm. Okay. So anyway, let's move on to the nitty gritty. Okay. Um, So the second question would be, there are some people that are very likable just without even really having to know them. And right off the bat, you're drawn to them. They're very appealing. You want to get to know them. You feel like you would want them for a friend. Um, So what makes them that way? And I'm not necessarily, we've talked about individuals on this podcast before that, you know, we both look up to, we admire them for this and that characteristic and selfless. I'm not even really necessarily talking about somebody that we admire because we've, you know, had time to get to know them and see that they're admirable or whatever, but just that whole superficially meeting somebody for the first time, they're very likable. What draws you to that person? What is it about them that makes them that way? I think uh, the first thing that comes out really quickly is, are they interested in you? Mm. You know, are they less interested in themselves than they are in you. And not that, I mean, if you're being the same way, then you're interested in them and there's a give and take conversation going on, but someone who asks you questions about your life and that is just genuinely wanting to know what you think and who you are and what makes you tick. And, you know, that, that may not be more of a surface thing, which may be what you're asking, but someone who indicates an interest in you or in other people, not necessarily you, but is not all about themselves. And that comes out pretty quickly. I think Mm -hmm. not someone that, that is all about what I'm thinking, what I'm doing, what I've done, what I've accomplished, uh, where I've been. And so that, that usually comes out pretty quick. But the other thing I think of as far as likability is someone with a sense of humor Mm -hmm. and not just about not, I'm not talking about a sense of humor that makes fun of people. Right. But a a sense of humor, it's self-deprecating or 
just thinks of, I don't know, when I think of happy families, I'm thinking of one in particular and they're laughing all the time. Mm -hmm. And John's family was like this. His dad laughed at so many different things. He, everything he turned into a story and he made it something to laugh about. And not that he wasn't serious when the time came to be serious and this other family too, but they just enjoyed life and they didn't take things too seriously. Mm -hmm. So to me, those are the, there's lots of other things and I'm sure we'll talk about them, but those two come to the top of my mind when I think about someone that's likable as someone that's not self-absorbed and someone that has a sense of humor. Mm-hmm. Those are good ones. I was trying to think about it if I had to nail it down and i you know, you start thinking about individuals in your mm-hmm. mind, the interactions that you have through the week, the people that you've talked to. And I really kept coming back to this whole idea of presence. Yeah. And somebody that just really sees you. And when you talk to them, you know, maybe they stop and face you and look you in the eyes and just have a real conversation with you. And they don't look like they're on their way somewhere else or yeah. distracted, or you don't feel like you're like, I don't want to keep you. You're obviously busy or heading yeah. out or, you know, and, and we all are, <laughs> we're mm-hmm. all busy and have things on our minds. So I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that. I'm just saying I'm drawn to people that um, when I see them, they see me, which yeah. I know sounds very selfish, but I'm just drawn to that. And I feel sure. like it's such a, a powerful gift that somebody has to give you their presence and their attention. And, um, you know, when you're talking to them, you know, have you ever talked to somebody and like they ask you a question and you start to answer it, but you could tell they're not even listening to you oh, or yeah. you just oh, need yeah. to, you need to hurry up and rush through your answer because they mm. would, don't really <laughs> about the answer because they need to get on their way you know yeah but somebody that just pauses and makes you feel like they actually do want to see you they do want to talk to you they do want to hear what you have to say and then you move along and it just seems like that encounter with them was refreshing Mm -hmm. and 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 a connection you know and I find that extremely magnetic and very likable and it makes me pause and think about my own offerings and what I present, because I know there are times when I'm trying to remember, I need to talk to so-and-so or I need to do this, or I need to run, do this before class, or I need to, you know, but, and even in my own family, you know, um, offering that kind of presence and gift and and things like that. So um, I thought it was really interesting because again, what you appreciate in other people is not necessarily something I'm turning around and offering myself. I think you do though, but, but noticing those things about people and then really thinking about it, like we're trying to do today makes us want to emulate those same things. But I think when we appreciate those things about people, I think it automatically, I mean, I, I know it has to be intentionality, but I think we start absorbing those things. And when there's someone we admire, we, we want to be like, then, then we think about what is it about them? But, mm-hmm. but like going back to what you said, someone who yawns, when you're talking now, just, if it's one o'clock in the morning, that is making me want to yawn. You just using that word. So now I'm trying really well, hard. If not I'm to... talking, no one would be able to see you. So it's okay. You just <laughs> yawn away and I'll not take offense, but, but really, you know, if you're, it's one thing, if it's middle of the night, you know, mm-hmm. but if you're just having a conversation and they, they yawn and not only yawn, but go, oh. and I've seen people do that. It's Mm -hmm. just such an off-putting thing or to, as soon as you start talking, they look down at their phone. Oh yeah. So there's ways that you just indicate that I'm not interested in anything you have to say. Mm -hmm. And that those are rude things. And those are just, to me, they're not, they're not acceptable. There's things that we do that we don't know we're doing, Mm -hmm. but to me, those are some things that we do that are just, they're just not right, you know, to make Mm -hmm. someone feel so inferior and So I hope that, that I I can't imagine anybody listening would do that. But I remember one, one time humorously, there was a preacher and this was right after we got married. So lots of years have passed, but he, um, he was shaking hands, you know, preachers do that shaking hands as people walk out the door. And and it was a man that knew my dad and he, I shook his hand. He said, how are you doing? How's your dad doing? And I said, well, dad just got out of the hospital. And he said, well, good, good, good. You know, it was one of those things (laughs) that 
I didn't hold it against him because I knew it was Sunday morning, you know, he's oh, shaking no. hands as people leave. But that made me really think about how mm. am I listening to people? And sometimes that's harder to do. And I've more times than I care to admit, you know, there's somebody that I, I need to give a message to. I need to give them something. And they're in a group of people. Mm-hmm. And I go straight to that person, deliver the message, and then I leave. And then I think, wow, that was so rude of me to not even say anything to the other people in that group. So I hope we give each other grace Mm -hmm. for some things like that. But, um, but I just, I admire and love people that the, the people, especially when my kids were little, that would bend down or get down on their knee in front of my child and talk to them on an eye to eye level. And that's Mm kind of something there's a gnat. There's, there's probably those bananas in there. Um, (laughs) You're going to have to make that banana bread or yeah. Don't tell Salisha. I may have to throw them out. Um, but just indicating an interest in, in my child, Mm -hmm. it was so touching to me. So I think there's things we can do that really, really, really speak to, I'm interested in you and, and I'll be that way. Yeah. I was thinking about how, um, and I'm, I'm picturing the church building environment, you know, before and Mm -hmm. after worship, when I see people and I go, how are you doing? Good. How are you doing? But I keep walking, you know, and yeah. there have been a few times when I've thought, good grief, you know, and I'll kind of stop and turn around and, and then answer. Yeah. I'm fine. How are you doing? You know, just like trying to mm-hmm. I'll pause and at least look you in the face since you've asked me <laughs> how I'm <Yeah>. doing. <laughs> yeah. Well, I was yeah. thinking about um, a couple other things were, kind of the opposites of some of the things that turn me off and, you know, um, the Mm know-it-all mentality, one better, one one better, better. one Mm -hmm. upper. Anytime you bring up anything, this is how it's supposed to be. This is what you should do. This, you know, that kind of, that kind of thing. And uh, Neil said a comment the other day in passing, we were talking about somebody and he was like, well, it's that typical firstborn personality. They know everything. And hmm. I could tell as soon as that came out of his mouth, he was like, uh, uh, I'm not saying <laughs> this. <you." laughs> I looked at him and I was like, ah! <laughs> well, <laughs> but so the opposite of that would be people that ask you questions, like you say, they show interest in what you have to say and mm-hmm. hearing about your way or learning from you without feeling the need to come around and say, yeah, but, and then add their two cents worth, you know, we don't always have to do that. Mm -hmm. Just listen and and ask more questions about what they said. And I think 90% of the time, the person that does that, and I don't know, maybe it's, maybe that's over overestimating, but most of the time, I think people are just trying to relate. Mm -hmm. I know I'm thinking of one person in particular that I can't get something out of my mouth before she's saying, I know my mom said blah, 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 whatever. Mm -hmm. And, but I know her heart and I know that she doesn't intend to come up, to come across as someone who has one better. She's just trying to relate and she's a likable person, but there's people. And I I think a lot of it comes from maybe insecurity or inferiority in their well, yeah, you did that, but just wait until this happens, or you should have been there when I did this. And, Mm -hmm. and again, I guess the people that do that are are not aware of how off-putting that is. And I know I've done it before, I'm sure, but uh, I try not to. But those conversations that you have with people who just, they're talking about themselves and what they've done and um, and you're asking them about themselves, but they don't ever return that. It just, it gets awkward really fast because you just feel like they're not interested in anything you have to say. And they're not interested in your experiences or in you. And so you just, I find myself not really caring to seek out their company. And I know I shouldn't be like that because, you know, I've been thinking about this lesson for this weekend, the precious souls the ones that are precious to God, every single soul in the whole world is precious to him. So I need to see them that way, but it's some, some people make it harder than other people. Yeah. Have you ever sat through a whole conversation and the reverse is true? Like you, at the end of that conversation, when they walked off, you realize I talked about myself the whole time. Yeah. And it wasn't that you were trying to talk about yourself the whole time. It's that the other person was so good about 
showing mm-hmm. their interest in you and they led the conversation and made it about you, you know, and then when they walk off, you're like, did I ever even <laughs> yeah. return the favor and ask mm-hmm. about them and their, what their week looks like, or, you yeah. know, um, and I was thinking too about the, the whole know-it-all concept of, you know, letting people celebrate their victories wherever they are in their learning journey. Um, they might just be just starting out in something new that you have already been through and experienced. And it might be tempting to say, oh, well, and also blah, 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 you know, Mm -hmm. but just, just say, oh, that's really interesting and let them enjoy that accomplishment wherever they are. And I think this is so true spiritually. You know, I think Mm -hmm. about brand new Christians or people trying to deepen their Bible study and you know, little choices that they've made or things that they're proud of. And maybe you've been a Christian for years and years and years, and you're kind of going, oh, wow. Okay. (laughs) Uh Um, But let them rejoice in that, Mm -hmm. that victory and that growth wherever they are, you know, and that that's a really likable trait is without the need to say, well, soon you'll be able to, right. You know, to make them feel a little bit less than or not quite there yet or whatever it might be. Just some, yeah. just some things that we might end up doing in conversation without intending to, and it can come across less supportive or condescending even, or things like that. Yeah. I think we can make things worse with people that do things like that by, by getting upset about it. Mm-hmm. And like, like we were just talking about, I think when you invest in someone and you decide I'm going to like this person. I'm going to try my hardest to like this person. I will like this person. Yeah. And when we, you know, it's that old saying, when you change the way you look at things, the things you look at change, but just deciding, you know, I'm going to have a better attitude about this person. This might happen when I see them the next time, but okay, I'm going to, I'm going to do what I need to do, which is indicate interest in them and ask them questions and be friendly to them and be likable to them or do what I can to be likable. And hopefully they'll absorb some of those traits. But if we, if we just, and I can feel this in myself, have that look on my face of, oh boy, here he comes or here she comes and we have to just make it through the next five minutes. And then I don't have to see him again for another, whatever week that just makes things worse. It makes things worse mentally for me and it doesn't help them at, at all. So I think we can do what we can to, to improve the situation by how we react to someone that's not very likable. Yes. So true. So true. Well, um, these are just things that we've just been kind of, you know, off the top of our head chit chatting about and what we think and our opinion and all that. And I started to think about this topic biblically, you know, does the Bible really even have anything to say about just being likable? And I have to think that it, it does matter to God and it is important because we're trying to draw people to Christ mm-hmm. and they're going to have no interest in learning about our savior. If we are off putting, yeah. you know, we're representing him and, and they don't even really want to be around us because we're just not like, them. and so I wasn't even quite sure at <laughs> first look where, it to, where to go. But when mm-hmm. I started thinking about it, I thought really, this is the best advice. And, and I think about it even with our children, you know, teaching the, them these things as they grow up and form their own friendships and our college kids as they're stepping out into the world. And, you know, but so for instance, first Thessalonians four verses nine through 12. Um, but think of it in the, you know, this concept of how we come across and relate with other people. About your love for one another, we do not need to write to you, for you yourselves have been taught by God to love each other. And in fact, you do love all of God's family throughout Macedonia. Yet, we urge you, brothers and sisters, to do so more and more. And just right there, you know, how many times do we say, you know, take it or leave it. I am what I am. You know, I'm I'm not mean to anybody. And I'm a nice enough person. So, but it's almost like, yes, you love each other, but keep striving to be even better about it and to do so more and more. And then goes on to say, as if to describe, you know, what this might look like, which I've never put these together before, but verse 11 says, and to make it your ambition to lead a quiet life, 
mm -hmm. should mind your own business and work with your hands, just as we told you, so that your daily life may win the respect of outsiders and so that you will not be dependent on anybody. But I just thought it kind of ties this, this love for, that we have for each other and this abounding in it still more and more with leading a quiet life, minding your own business, you know, and how many times does us getting in somebody else's business, whether it's making assumptions about them or judgments or offering things that weren't ever asked for, <laughs> yeah. you know, how many times is that off-putting in our relationship? So that one was really good. Um, keep growing in your love more and more, mind your own business. And then pretty much all of Romans 12, which I feel like we keep coming back to that text. Mm -hmm. It's so practical. Yes. But particularly in these verses, again, think about our relationships. The first one in verse nine, he says, be sincere in your love for one another. And I think about all those little things that we've mentioned that, you know, well, this would help if you were not frowning and you were smiling instead, mm -hmm. or this would help if you actually acted interested in other people instead of being self-absorbed and this would help. But all of that has to be sincere yeah. because if it's fake, you know, in any way and put, you know, it's very put off being put, yeah. put off putting. Off -putting. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, that didn't sound right. It's very off putting. Um, be sincere in your love for one another. Verse 10 says, be devoted to others. And I think it'd be fun to kind of camp out on that word devoted to see, mm -hmm. you know, it might be something a little bit different than what we're thinking we're accomplishing. Yeah. Um, verse 10, honor one another above yourselves. That will definitely make you a likable person. Absolutely. Verse 12, he says, be joyful and patient. And the opposite of those things, somebody who is not a joyful person, you know, they're always, they always have something to complain about or gripe about or whine about is not likable. Mm -hmm. Somebody who is impatient with other people in the world at large, you know, does not draw people to themselves. I am very impatient, impatient with impatient people. <laughs> <laughs> it's just not right, is it? No. Um, and then verse 13 talks about sharing with others and being hospitable, you know, opening your home. And then verse 15 is the one that talks about rejoicing with those who rejoice and weep with those who weep. So being with people and experiencing their life with them. Uh, verse 16 then says, do not be proud or conceited, which I think kind of goes back to that whole know it all, you yeah. know kind of attitude. So mm -hmm. I'm just reading through this chapter and I'm thinking, I feel like everything he is pointing out to build unity, you know, amongst Christians and um, are things that if we practiced them would make us likable people yeah. in general. And, um, and then the last thing I'll share that I, that I seem to keep seeing over and over in the word was um, this whole idea of cheerfulness. Mm -hmm. um, Smiles. Yeah. And I feel like we've seen this before, or we've talked about this before about how people will say, God never told us to be happy, you know, just yeah. holy, or, you know, people will yeah. take exceptions with the difference between joy and happiness and all that. And yet the Bible has tons to say about presenting a joyful countenance, being mm -hmm. cheerful, doing things cheerfully. Um, Proverbs 17, 22 says a joyful heart is good medicine. And you know, what, what are you giving others when they're around you and how do they feel when they leave you? You know, um, Proverbs 15, 13, a glad heart makes a cheerful face. And then Proverbs 15, 30, bright eyes, gladden the heart. Mm. So again, it's that whole countenance, you know, um, and then in the new Testament, I found it interesting that God mentions cheerfulness when it comes to things that we do in our service to him, like giving, he wants it to be done cheerfully, not grudgingly. Second Corinthians 9, 7. And then when we're extending mercy to others, he wants us to do it cheerfully. Mm. Um, Romans 12, verse 8. So, you know, again, sincere, sincere cheerfulness, not that over the top, yeah. unlikable cheerfulness. Fake. Yeah, fake <laughs> cheerfulness. So when I when I looked at all of that, you know, the things that I found, it seems like if we were going to kind of summarize it all, what the word has to say about it, it'd be number one, be interested in others, which is what you said right out of the gate. Number two, cheerfulness. And then number three, sincerity. 
those seem to be the three things that they keep all coming back to, to be likable, which we want to, so that we can draw others to Christ. Yeah. While you were talking, I, it made me remember Brian Ketchum spoke in chapel last week, um, trying to encourage the students. It was a rough quarter last quarter. I mean, it's always got some rough stuff going on, but mm -hmm. I think it was just a lot of them were struggling. And so he's, Brian's just an encouraging person, but he, really he had an excellent, excellent lesson in chapel. And he was talking about Hebrews 6, 9. And he said, beloved, it's a quote from that beloved. We are convinced of better things about you. But the passage says, but beloved, we are convinced of better things concerning you and things that accompany salvation, though we are speaking in this way. For God is not so, and it's not unjust so as to forget your work and the love which you have shown toward his name and having ministered and in still ministering to the saints. But he, he made the points that the first point that he made was that your peers are convinced of better things for you. And he looked around the room and he's, he was saying, we're all on each other's side. We are all pulling for one another. And we all are convinced that there are better things for, for us talking about Barnabas and John Mark, and we need to be willing to say good things about our peers. And, you know, that's going to make us likable. And I know that our whole goal in life is not to be likable, mm -hmm. but our goal in life is to be pleasing to Christ. And you've just given us lots of reasons why he says we should, but these things are important too. We need to hear from one another. We need to, to know feel that confidence, I guess, from one another that I believe in you. Mm -hmm. And that is super likable when someone has confidence in you mm -hmm. and believes in you. And that just gives you that boost that you need. And, and, and I had never really thought about that with this passage. Mm -hmm. He went on to talk about how your instructors are convinced of better things for you. Um, and then he said, God of, above all is convinced of better things in me. And so I just thought that was, was interesting to think about. There's, there's a lot of things in scripture that talk about our countenance and, and our mental, um, how would you say that? How we are able to mentally decide and be convinced about things that are good and better and, and cheerful and positive. And we can convey that to other people and how we, um, how we present ourselves. I love that. That is so good. And I think about how, much that is needed for people to hear that they can do it. They can succeed. I believe in you. Mm -hmm. I see the best in you, you know, because think about everything that we face in the world yeah. <laughs> that's beating you down is the exact opposite of that. And of right. course, where else should we get that encouragement than from our Christian family? Right. You know, um, <clears throat> I think about that a lot with my own husband because Neil's really good about that. He's an, he's an encourager and he's, yeah, he's definitely. good at being encouraging to me. And sometimes he'll say things to me and in my mind, I'm going, that's sweet, but I know, you know, better because you know what I've done, you know, and you know, my history and you know, my struggles and, and he does, but he still believes in me and he wants me to know that. Right. And it's, and I love him for that. And I treasure that. And it means a lot to, to me to hear that from him. So you are so right. I can't think of a greater gift or things that we could do for the people around us, the precious souls, mm -hmm. um, than to extend that to them. It's almost like we keep going back to this word grace in all of these episodes. Yeah, you may know somebody's past or their struggles, or you may be privy to something that's happened in their life. And when they know that you know, and you still mm -hmm. say things to them that show yeah. them, you're wonderful at this, I believe in you. Yeah. You're one of the best, blah, blah, blah. I know, you know, it's like Jesus to Peter, you know, when he yes. said, when he said, Satan has desired to have you and sift you like wheat. And, mm -hmm. and he goes on to say, but when you have turned again, strengthen your brothers. And so Jesus knew what he was going to do. And yet he still instilled confidence in him that he was still useful to God. So mm -hmm. that is a huge one that didn't even occur to me until we were talking about this confidence in people. Well, so our, our, you know, go forward for the week would be to be likable. And it doesn't involve fitting in, being up with the latest trends, you know, feeling like we have to be all that for everybody around us and be successful. And it involves being sincere and showing interest and encouraging people 
and what else did I say? Being cheerful, those types of things. That's our, that's what we do going forward when we engage with other people. Are you looking at the time? No, I'm, someone just tried to FaceTime me and oh. didn't set this on. <laughs> do not disturb. I, thought, I know you have a cut You didn't hear that? Look, no. Oh, Sorry. Okay. So, okay. I just saw you, you looked startled and then you looked at the time and I thought, oh, have we gone past your cutoff no. time? Cause I no, know you that, have to that, go. That, 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 that. Oh. <laughs> oh, can't believe you didn't hear it. No, none of that came across. Okay. So is there anything you want to add to this topic before we move on? And I'd rather keep are... talking about the topic than do the, will it illustrate? <laughs> <laughs> okay. I don't know if we were any good about at it last week or not, but Neil says that's okay because that makes it better. <laughs> So all the pressure is off. (laughs) So you get to go first. I'm going to give you, will it illustrate? I'm going to give you this time a random fact instead of a news item. Okay. The random fact is people once ate arsenic to improve their skin. I don't know if you saw that this morning. I came across that this morning. Are you serious? Yes. I actually looked up random facts. It wasn't even a news article. (laughs) That's okay. This one, and this was a couple of days ago. Okay, so it said that a lot of Victorians' cosmetics, you know, things that they would put on their skin were riddled with arsenic. But there were also products in the, on the market in the late 1800s, like, this is what it was called, safe arsenic complexion wafers. <laughs> Yummy. <laughs> that she would eat, and they were created by a doctor. Um, and they claim to get rid of freckles, blackheads and other facial disfigurements. <laughs> There's your random facts, Carla. <laughs> Will it illustrate? Your face. Well, Kathy, to say things like you say them. Uh, sometimes the things that we think are good for us are really poisonous. <laughs> Among them, Things that I can't think of right now, (laughs) but sometimes it sounds really good. And even somebody that you think is really smart tells you it's good, but it turns out to not be good. So you need to know the truth about things so that you can not eat arsenic. You were doing so good. (laughs) That's the best I can do. I'm impressed. That was pretty good. No, I okay. saw that this morning because I, I Googled That's random so facts too. So oh, it came up. So, so you may have read, you may have come across this one too. All right. Okay. Kathy, did you know that McDonald's once created broccoli that tasted like bubble gum? To bring this unusual vision to life, McDonald's huh. turned to its research and development team, food scientists and flavor experts were tasked with developing a broccoli variety that not only had the distinctive taste of bubble gum, but also retained the same nutritional value. It was a challenging endeavor as broccoli, a cruciferous, are you impressed that I know how to say that? I'm very impressed. Cruciferous vegetable has a naturally strong and somewhat bitter flavor. Quite a far cry from the sugary sweetness of bubble gum. So it goes on to say, ultimately, McD's candy flavored broccoli never made it to the chain's menu. The project was eventually shelved possibly due to the insurmountable flavor challenges or concerns about the reception of such a unique product. Mm. I did not. Did I give you enough time to? Uh, Yes. Thank you. First of all, that's disgusting. I know. Um, So Carla, you know, do not sugarcoat the gospel. There are truths that people need to hear because it's good for them. And if you try and sugarcoat it, you're just going to mess it up. Good one. Okay. All right. Thank you. Good one. (laughs) Do you have something good for you? I do. It's kind of an unusual. It's a little bit different, but I thought it would be helpful because I'm always looking for things like this, but it's a, um, an icebreaker that I've actually tried. Yeah. Oh, good. But they, when I looked this up, it's a little bit different than I've done it. They call it concentric circles. And I did this in a line and I think I've told you about it before, but maybe not on the podcast, Mm -hmm. but this is where you, you are, you have, you divide up into two groups, make a big outer circle and a big inner circle with people and they face each other. You know, they line up facing each other. So you have the Mm -hmm. same number in each circle 
And then you provide them with questions that they ask one another, but you have a timer. You only get like two minutes to discuss Mm -hmm. one question. So let me read what they say. Um, Pairs discuss their answers to a getting to know you question. Then they rotate for the next question, forming a new partnership. So it's, it's kind of like speed dating. In fact, I think that's what I called it. And it was in my house. And so it was so loud because there was like 30 women. So you've got 15 pairs, Mm -hmm. but it was fun. And it was non-threatening because you know how, I mean, I'm this way. If there's somebody that has been like, when we go back to Dripping Springs and there's people there that I don't know, and I'm like, I'm supposed to know them and I haven't introduced myself. And then it just gets more awkward Mm -hmm. the longer you put it off. Right. And um, so this way you have the questions. I, you provide them ahead of time. Mm -hmm. Something like what they have is, do you play sports? Um, Do you consider yourself shy or outgoing? What's the last movie you saw? So there's simple things Mm -hmm. like that. Yeah. But it's like a conversation starter. That's easy, but you only have, you know, a short period of time. So you, you get in these circles and you have the first question, then you blow a whistle or you sound a timer or something. And then the inner circle shifts left or right or whatever. So one circle is not moving. And so you have, you know, you have a certain amount of time, 30 minutes, you do this Mm -hmm. and you might possibly speak to each person uh, Mm -hmm. that you're opposite. And it's, you know, some people hate icebreakers. I don't enjoy Mm -hmm. them in particular, but they're Mm -hmm. helpful in a lot of circumstances. So, um, it's just that they call it concentric circles. I called it speed, um, and not speed dating, of course, but I called it speed getting to know you or something like that. Mm -hmm. And so it was fun. So that's that's nice. I'm thinking for you. That's very timely too, because somebody literally just asked me this week for icebreaker ideas. So thanks for that. Okay. All right. Mine is a game. Um, it's called the chameleon. Have you ever heard of that? No, never seen it. Um, so I learned this game from Cassie Adkins Mm -hmm. a few weeks ago. They introduced us to it. It is so much fun. We had so much fun playing it that we ended up buying it for ourselves and couldn't wait to play it with our own family members. But, um, see if I can explain it quickly. You've got, uh, a series, a topic, a theme, a topic with a bunch of words on it that go with that theme on a card in the middle of the table. Everybody else is handed a card. And one of those cards is going to say, you are the chameleon. Everybody else's card is going to have a little code on it that's going to let you know which word on that card in the middle of the table is the secret word for the round. So everybody knows what that same word is, except for the person who's the chameleon. So you go around the room and you have to say a word that gives a little clue to the secret word. Uh That you know what it is. So it has to be specific enough that everybody knows, oh, okay, you're not the chameleon. But it has to be generic enough that you're not giving the word away to the chameleon. Because when it's the chameleon's turn, they have to pull it off like they know which word it is. So they're kind of listening to what everybody Mm -hmm. else is saying, you know, and trying Mm -hmm. to. And so then everybody gives their word. And at the end, you vote who you think the chameleon is. And it ends up being hilarious because... You've got people debating. No, no, no. I don't think it's this person because they actually said blah, 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 or people defending their word that they've given. It is so much fun. It's a oh, great. Sounds fun. It is. It's a great group game. So it's called The Chameleon. Good deal. Yes. Okay. All right. Good conversation. I think you're very likable. Well, I like you too. I like you too. Let's be friends. Okay. <laughs> I'll think about it. Okay. Oh. oh. Do you like me? Check yes or no. <laughs> Definitely, yes. Uh, Well, have a good trip, a safe trip. I know it'll be a wonderful encouragement to the ladies this weekend, and I look forward to chatting with you next week. And until then, keep looking up. Love you. Love you too. Bye.